Good evening, this is Thomas Cantu, Associate Pastor here at Southside Baptist Church. I want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. Tonight's title is, Though He Slay Me, I Will Trust Him. I know it sounds like a pretty steep title, but I think it's a pretty steep situation that Job's facing. We're going to continue in Job. Our focus verse tonight is going to be Job 13, verse, uh, Job 13, 15. That will be our focus, and we'll sit there tonight and talk about, just talk about that one verse. You know, as, we, as we're looking back and looking at Job and, and his conversation that's going on here through through these first 13 chapters, and, and we see everything that Job's endured as far as, you know, losing his a great amount of wealth, lost his, his cattle and uh, his, some of his servants, lost his children, lost a whole lot, and his friends come and <clears throat> or I want to say comforting him, but they're not doing a very good job of comforting him. But having conversation with him, uh, and a lot of the conversation you see are, are them looking and pointing at the sin, uh, assuming that he's suffering because of the sin, assuming that he's lost everything due to sin. Uh, and we've read in here, we've talked about this a couple times throughout this study, is, you know, Job, God pointed to Job, and he said, look at Job, my servant, he's upright, he's a God-fearing man. And we've, you know, seen that a couple different times where God has made those same statements about Job to the enemy. Um, but Job continuing to endure, and as his friends come in and point to him and, and try to put the blame on him and say, no, it's because of your sin, even though they don't have the full capacity or knowledge of what is going on behind the scenes. You know, a lot of times we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and that was the case here. They didn't know. But he continued to endure the loss that he had lost, his health issues that, that was coming up now, you know, uh, the enemy was really on him, and, and he was suffering physically as well as emotionally. And he would endure this, and then his friends come in on top of things, and rather than encouraging him or trying to lift him up, you know, they're trying to figure out why, and they're just pointing back to sin. But all they're doing is bringing him back down. But yet he continues to be faithful to God. Even with his, when his wife tells him, curse God and die, he continues to be faithful to God. And it leads us up to our verse tonight of how he, you know, he's, you know, though he slays me, I'm going to be faithful. He's going to trust in God. He's going to rely on God regardless of the circumstances. And that's something, that's a lesson for us all to learn. You know, it's easy for us to follow this when everything's going easy. Everything's smooth. Maybe a little bumpy road here and there. And it's easy to hold on and say, yes, I've got Jesus. God's going to got my back. You know, and I can stand here and tell you how, I can tell you examples of, of my own life where I've had struggles and where I've, you know, have hard times and I've had heartbreak and, and just different things throughout life as we all do. And I can tell you how God got me through each of those situations, how he worked in there, how he used it for the good, you know, and we look in retrospect, in retrospect, we can see the things, how he's worked in our lives. But you know what? Whatever stories I have, whatever experiences I've had, I don't think I can compare to Job. There's not very many of us can that can say that we've lost all the things that Job has. That we've experienced that kind of pain that Job is experiencing. But yet Job set the example. As he did that, he remained faithful and constant to God. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Is how we can be, we're talking about the three B's. And we're going to be talking about being confident. Let me scroll down for a second. <laughs> be confident, be prepared, and be faithful. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And as we go through our life, these are things that we want to look at in our walk with God. And be confident in what He can do. We'll get, we'll get in there and we'll break that down. So let's read that verse. Job thirteen fifteen. It says, Though He slay me, yet I will trust in Him. But I will maintain mine own ways before Him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you tonight. Lord, we first just give you thanks and honor for all you do, Lord. We thank you for the life that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for how you guide us and protect us and, and direct us and, and even how you, you shape and mold us through the good times and through the bad times, Lord. Lord, I pray that you take this lesson, lesson tonight, Lord, and let it be all you, Lord. Just hide me behind the cross. Don't let anybody see me or hear my words, but let them hear what you have to say. I just pray that you fill me with your spirit, fill my mouth with your words, Lord, and let it be a message that would convict us, a message that would draw us closer to you, Lord. And I pray if there's one out there that did, that does not know you as our Savior tonight, that they come to know who you are, Lord. This is what we're here for. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. 
So the three B's, be confident, be prepared, and be faithful. And those are some of the things that I want to look at as we look at, you know, all that Job experienced and all that he went through. You know, he and Job, in this scripture, this verse right here, he, he expressed that confidence. You know, though he slay me, you know, first of all, you think about that word, though he slay me. He's, he's talking about God here, and I don't believe God was slaying him, but to him, the turmoil that he was going through, the pain, the agony, the suffering that he was going to, he felt as if he was being slain. But yet he says, although he slays me, he says, I will trust in him. I will have confidence. I'm going to continue to believe. I'm going to continue to follow. And you know, that's where the rubber really meets the road. You know, as Christians, we can come and raise, raise our hands and we can worship God and praise God. And, and, you know, say all these great things. God is good. And all the time, and all the time God is good. And we can say all these things. But when it comes down to the heartache, when it comes down to when life gets real, when, when it seems like everything's falling apart, when it seems like there's no hope, when you get to that point, as Job was getting here, to be able to stand up and say, hey, even though I feel like if it, as if God's slain me, I feel like God's turned his back on me. He's abandoned me. He says, but I'll, although I feel that way, I'm still going to remain confident. I'm still going to remain faithful. I'm going to remain, remain loyal to God. That's the kind of love that we need to have for God. That's the kind of relationship that we need to have for God. We need to continue to have that confidence. You know, when we talk about confidence, you think about how you, your confidence is shaped, how your confidence is built up. It comes down to experiences. When, when we have confidence in someone and they let us down, and then they let us down, and then they let us down, or they backstab us, or, or whatever the case may be, after a while your confidence begins to go down in that person. Talk about the stock market. The stock market goes up and down all the time. And, it's, and that confidence, you know, that, that fluctuation of stock markets and the values, it's all based on confidence that the investors have. If they see that there's going to be good things come in, they see I'm going to make money in this, they're going to put money in there and build it up. They have confidence in that. If they think it's not, then the confidence goes down and they go away. Confidence is based on the things that we experience and the things that we feel. Think about our kids. You know, our, our kids, when, when our kids do good things, they're bringing home good grades, our confidence goes up in them. We see they're good, making good choices. Your confidence goes up to them, you, and, and you give them a little more freedom, a little more room because you know you can trust them because you have confidence. On the other hand, they start making low grades, they hang around with the wrong kids, they get in trouble, they're not showing the responsibility of getting chores done, things like that, our confidence goes down. Doesn't mean we don't love them. We're still going to. Love them the same, but their confidence goes down. And it kind of takes away that trust. So see how our confidence is based on these things with things around us and with people around us. Our confidence is based on that. But Job here, God given him everything. And, and we see in Scripture where he said, you know, God gave me all these things and now he's taking it away. And although God gave him that and taking, taking that away and now Job is suffering and trying to make sense of what's going on. Trying to figure out why. Why have I lost everything? Why have I lost my children? Why am I sick as I am? You know, why is all my hope just squeezed out of me? You know, and, and a lot of people at that point, before that point, a lot of people, maybe you and me, would begin to lose confidence in God and begin to doubt. Is God really there? Does God really love me? Does God really have the power to take care of me? If I'm doing all the right things and I'm trying to, and I'm trusting in Him and, and I feel like I'm on the right page with Him, but yet I'm suffering, but yet I'm losing, then our confidence begins to kind of shy away. It begins to fail. And that's where we get in trouble. But Job, he's lost everything. He could easily say, God's forsaken me. God wasn't really real. God doesn't really love me. And that's Satan. Satan will come in. And here's a message for tonight to think about. When the trials are laid on you heavily, when everything seems to be going wrong, Satan's going to come in and he's going to tell you, you see, God doesn't really love you. You see, God's really not there. You're wasting your time going to church. 
It makes no difference. You're still going to suffer. You're still going to lose. That's what Satan wants you to believe. That's what Satan's going to come in. We're being tested. Our faith is being tested sometimes. There could be other reasons. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we have to remain confident in God. Job lost everything. When many people would say, I'm done with God. I don't, I don't, I don't want to believe anymore. I don't want to follow anymore. It's not worth it. Job didn't do that. He remained confident. And that's a lesson for you and me. When the going gets rough, when it seems like it's falling apart, where is your confidence? You've got to have that confidence in God. But you know what? Job had confidence in God. He said, I'm going to remain faithful. I'm going to remain true to God. I'm going to continue to trust Him. Have that confidence in, in Him. But you know what? Job also has some confidence in himself. What do I mean by that? Job 13 and 18. He says, Behold, I have ordered my case. I know that I shall be justified. There's a statement. I've ordered my case. I've got my case ready. I've prepared my case. I've got all my facts together. And I'm confident I'm going to be justified. How can Job say that? How can he be so bold to say, I've got a case, not a case against God, but I've got a case to stand up for myself. And I'm going to be justified. God's the ruler of that. God's going to be the one to decide on that. But I believe Job's confidence came from his life and his experience and relationship with God. The scripture tells us a couple of times we've already read, well, God says he's upright. He's a God-fearing man. He boasted on him. That right there says a lot about Job's character. It, it shows that Job was living a godly life. Job wasn't living in sin. Doesn't mean he was sinless, but he was not living in sin. Because if not, how could God say that he's upright, that he's a God-fearing man? How could God be boasting on him? So Job had a case because Job says, there's no evidence against me. I've, not, I've done nothing wrong. You think of an innocent person who's standing on trial. And sure, there's going to be nervousness. There's going to be some fear because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what facts are going to come out or lies that might come out. But with God, he knows all and he knows the truth. But, but someone who's on trial for a criminal case, if they know, say they, they have a criminal case against them for robbery. Say they robbed a store, they broke into a store. That person that's, that's up on that stand, if they're, if they're innocent, there's going to be a little less fear because they're going to know the fact that I wasn't there. There's nothing to tie me to that story. There's no fingerprints because I didn't go in there. There's no evidence. I'm not going to be on the camera because I didn't go in there. I didn't do it. They can have confidence in themselves because they know that they didn't commit the crime. And I think Job was that way. He, he said, I haven't done anything wrong, so I don't know what's going on. But I'm not going to get, you know, this isn't because of sin. And I, and I know that I'm clean, I'm clear. So my point is, can you have that kind of confidence? When you look back at your life, when you look at your lifestyle, the things you're doing, do you think you could present yourself before the Lord and say, here's all the facts about me. Here's all my background. Here's everything I've done. Here, here, look at my phone. Look at look at the things that I've been watching on TV. Look at the places I've been going to. Look at the people that I've been associating with. It's all clean. Because I haven't stepped out of God's will. I haven't ste stepped out of what God has instructed me to do through His Word. Through His Scripture. So you can have confidence. You can have confidence. So I want, to, want you to have that confidence in God. When you go through those trials and those struggles, have that confidence to know that God will get you through. He's got the power. It's in His timing. And have confidence in yourself by knowing, I've lived a righteous life. Now, if you look back and you start to think about, what have I done lately with my life? Where have I gone? What have I watched? What have I been involved in? And if you see things in there, that you know would not be pleasing to God, 
you see things in there that you would just say, oh, God, look the other way. Let me get rid of this real quick. It's, that's not going to happen. But if you have that, those kinds of things, right now is the time. Right now is the time to let go of those things. Whatever sins might be holding on to you or that you're holding on to, whatever sins that are going to cause you to stumble and fall, whatever sins are going to come between you and God, take them to God. Say, Lord God, take these sins away from me. Take this desire for this sin. Take it away from me so that I can be confident in my lifestyle, so that I can be confident to know that if I stand before you, I can be held innocent. I can be clear. Now, I want to bring this into the, right now. When I say that, you know, we all have sinned. And God, Jesus Christ, is the one who takes that sin away. And we'll clear it there. But I'm talking about our lifestyles right now. I'm talking about as we go through this life and the things that we do. Are we living a life that I can stand up confidently and say, Lord, here's everything I've done. And he could say, I'm well pleased. Or is he going to look at your list of things and say, you need to get rid of that, you need to get rid of that. Now it's the time of truth to bring it to him. Lord, help me get rid of those things. Help me so that I can be confident before you. That I can know that I'm walking in your footsteps. That I can know that I'm living by your word, by your instructions. And the next thing I want to talk about is being prepared. The trials. You've got the confidence in God. You've got the confidence in yourself. I'm going to walk a straight line. I'm going to follow God. I'm going to be in His Word and I'm going to live it out. But then be prepared. Because see what happens? Satan will sneak up on you. He'll, he'll catch you when you get your guard down. When you're not looking, when you're not ready, Satan will come up. So first thing I want you to do is remember, you know, Jesus tells us, He says, you're going to have trials. You're going to have tribulations. So be prepared and know those trials are going to come. What are you going to do when temptation comes? What are you going to do when you fall on your face? What are you going to do when things get going rough? Where are you going to turn? This is why it's so important right now. This is why it's so important that we get into our Bibles and we have our quiet times. We have our Bible studies. Read what God's got to say to you. Study what He's got for you. Apply it to your life. That's part of the preparation. That's how you prepare for life. That's how you prepare for the battles. Job had a close relationship with God. He was upright, a righteous man. And because when the and when the trials come, when the struggles came, when he lost things, he still had God because he had that relationship with God. He didn't get that relationship with God by just if Bible was where they were back then, by just putting his Bible on the shelf and letting it collect dust. He got God's word. Pay attention to what God had for him. Sure, he was in prayer. Sure, he was in the temples. Sure, he had that communication going on. So that, would, that way he would be prepared and be confident and know who God is and know that God could get him through the situation. So that's part of your preparation. But your preparation also is put it in God's word so that you can recognize the sin for what it is. When this temptation is there, when Satan's putting out his little tracks, Traps say, look at this. Doesn't this look good? Doesn't this look nice? And you've got God's Word in you. you got the Holy Spirit in you. You're reading. You're pray, prayed up. Praying is part of the preparation. And when you see that little temptation, that little snare that Satan set out for you, it's like, whoa, I see that. You see that right away. Because you're in tune with the Holy Spirit. Because you're in His Word. Because you're preparing daily by reading His Word and studying His Word. That's how we prepare for the struggles, for the trials that will come. Know that they will come so that you're not just there being lazy and all relaxed. And then boom, here comes Satan. Trip you up. So be prepared by being in his word. And the last thing I want to talk about is be faithful. You know, our faith is a source of strength. My faith is a source of strength. When I learn to have faith in God, as a young Christian, I would have a little bit of faith. And when I would have a little bit of faith, and I would take a little bitty baby step. And I would see how God would get me through that. I would come back stronger. The next opportunity of expressing my faith would come along, and I could step a little easier and a little stronger. The trials would come in life, and my faith would be tested. 
Job's ta faith was tested here. He was on a test. And he passed his test because of his relationship with God. And he expressed that faith regardless, even though it seemed, it appeared that God was slaying him, as the scripture says. His friends looked at him and said, you know, you got sin, God's turned his back on you. That's basically what they were saying. They thought God did, he didn't have God's blessing on him. There was no appearance of that blessing on him. But he was going through this trial. He was going through this test. He was being tested. Satan was trying to prove that Job would fall, that Job would curse God to his face if he was to take everything away from him and take his health away from him. And God says, no, I'm going to prove otherwise. I'm going to prove that that's my faithful servant and that he will not curse me to my face, that he will remain faithful. You ever stop and think for a second? We've got this, this spiritual warfare that goes on all around us. And we read how Job, you know, God comes up, or Satan comes up to the presence of God. And God says, you see my servant down there? What if your trial, what if your struggle is a result of God testing to show that's my faithful servant what if God's allowing you to go to the, through this so that he can show that you're faithful you're going to remain righteous you're going to remain faithful you're going to remain loyal even though if everything's taken away stop and think about that for the next trial that comes up the next time you get tempted is this another test how am I going to come out on this test be prepared for it be in your word daily, that way you'll see it when it comes. And you'll stand strong in God's word. And you hit your knees and you pray and say, Lord God, give me the strength. I see the test coming. I see the trials coming, Lord. Give me the strength and the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to face it. And to carry out your will. So that I can glorify your name, Lord. Have that kind of attitude when that struggle comes up. Say, Lord, I know you can get me through this. I'm going to trust in you. You know, one of the things I, I want to mention that I, as I'm going through this, and, and we look at different, you know, in Job's case, we can see what was going on. We can see what caused it, what caused the situation, Satan. You know, talking to God, saying, no, he, he's not going to, you know, he'll curse you to your faith. We can see all that. But in our lives, we don't see what's going on. There are times where we're chastised. There are times when we're in sin be, because, or we're in trouble because of sin. Because we allowed sin to come in. We got too close to the, the temptation lines. We got a little too close. Crossed over a little. And now we have the consequences. So when I find myself facing struggles. When things are not going right. I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad week. A bad month. Whatever it might be. You know when it seems like everything's falling apart. Or I, I can't hear the presence of God. I don't see God working in my life at this time. What I do is I ask myself the question. I begin to examine myself. Am I walking? Am I, can I be confident that I'm walking according to God's word? So I can stop and step back for a second and look at the situation. Here's the trials I'm going through. Here's the struggles. Here's my life. Here's where I've been the past 30 days. Here's the things that I've said, the things that I've done, the things that I've watched, how I've spent my time. Did I glorify God? Where was I doing things that brings disgrace to God? Where I do it was I doing things that, that I the Bible clearly says don't do that. And I want to come to a point to where I can look and look at my life and say, okay, it's right in line with Scripture. So I don't think this is a trial because I've sinned in my life. God's going to use this for something. Either way, he's going to use it for something. But sometimes he's using it to get us back on track. And then I begin to pray and say, Lord God, going through this trial, going through this struggle, I don't understand why. Can you show me? Can you help me to understand? Is there something in my life that I need to change? Do I need to be, change my behavior? Do I need to change who I hang around? Do I have to change, you know, the balances in my life? What is it? And you ask God and you get into his word and you look for the truth of what he's got for you. You let him talk to you through the scripture. You let him talk to you through worship music. You let him talk to you through Christian, Christian brothers and sisters, through sermons, through Christian books based on God's word. 
There's so many sources that God can speak to us through. The main and most important, I'm going to tell you, it's got to be based on this. Whatever you're putting in, wherever you're getting it from, make sure you've got a scripture to back it up, to keep you on the right track, to help you be faithful. Job remained faithful. He remained loyal, regardless of the fact that, hey, God gave me all these blessings, and now he just take it, takes it away. And then he made me sick, or allowed me to get sick. But you know what? I still love him. He still, the God of heaven and earth, he still sits on the throne. He still created me. And I know he still loves me. And I know whatever I'm going through, whatever struggles or trials, I know I can be confident. I can be confident in him. And I can be prepared because he gives me his word. He speaks to me so I can be prepared for what's going to come. And I can be faithful because of the faith that he gives me. And as you lean on that faith and you become stronger, he'll prepare you for the next journey. Maybe the next test. Maybe this is the next opportunity. You know, as, he, as we go through these struggles and these trials, as Job went, he was shaping him and making him, his faith even stronger. And I can tell you personally, struggles in my own life, trials in my own life that I have had to endure. And a lot of times I didn't know why. Why am I going through this? Sometimes I could look back and say, I see what God was doing. He was keeping me away from something I shouldn't have been by. Other times, he was preparing me for something bigger that was going to come. Sometimes, he used them to prepare me to encourage somebody else. So God's used me in those different ways through those trials and through those struggles. And, you know, Paul, I believe it was Paul, you know, says about, he counts his, his trials, his struggles, he counts them as joy. The pains we go through, we count it as joy. You don't want to think that way at the moment. This ain't joy. I want to get out, get away from this. I want to get past this. But that can be God working on you, pulling you back where you need to be, or preparing you for something bigger. Just remember, God's still in charge. God's still in control. And as we read through Job, we can see how Job is, is uh, you know, he keeps talking about how, you know, God, the heavens, of the heavens and the earth. He's almighty. He's all powerful. He's got the final say. There's nothing I can do against him, because. He, He's got it all. So I know, and Scripture tells me, He works all things to the good of those who love Him. So another thing to ask yourself, you get those trials, do you really love God? And just say, don't just say, oh yeah, of course I do. I go to church. Do you love Him to where He's changed your life? Do you love Him to the point to where you're living for Him? Your decisions that you make daily are based on what would God do? What would God have me to do? Your decisions, do you look for answers in the scriptures? Or do you look to the world? Do you look to your friends? Look into God's word. Because if you love God, you're going to want to please God. And if you want to please God, you're going to want to know what he has to say about your situation. If you want to know what he says about your situation, it's all right here. Right in here. So your challenge for this week, when you see the struggles coming, the trials, I challenge you to be confident. Be confident in God. Know that he'll get you through it. Check your life. Do you have the confidence that you can stand clear in him? And I challenge you to be prepared. Get in there, read it, have that quiet time. And I challenge you, no matter how hard it gets, that you remain faithful. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you this evening, Lord. We thank you for your time. We thank you for your word. Lord, I just pray that these words don't go out uh, void. I pray that you take these words and that you use them to help somebody deal with an issue, to help somebody become stronger, to be an encouragement to someone, Lord. I pray that you will move amongst the people hearing this. And just we thank you for all you do, Lord. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank you and have a blessed week.